last year, uh, were much more on the Become a Men's Team or Battle Rage plan, which made blocking a lot more challenging. This list that Michael Matrix is playing, one copy of Teamer Battle Rage and one copy of Gore Clan Rampager. Chump blocking is much more effective against the strategy, and it's part of the reason that Liliana the Last Hope has showed up in the list because Birds of Paradise, Noble Hierarch, Lingering Souls tokens, they're more problematic for this build of Death Shadow than the previous versions that we saw last year. And I think that's part of the reason that Tilson has ha able, been able to have a good weekend with Obzon. His Lingering Souls is just much better against this deck than it used to be, and if people are shifting to these three color mid-range, uh, you know, removal attacker blocker kind of decks to fight Death Shadow, well, Lingering Souls and a bunch of removal spells also quite potent there. We got our third result, Nicholas Bird, the bird's the word. I'm sorry, I had to. Nicholas Bird with ad nauseum takes down John Sauer playing Bantel Drazi. Two games to one. Look, we knew we knew that Nicholas was going to win game one. Mm -hmm. Pretty hard for him not to. The question was, was he get a sideboard a game? The answer, quite obviously, is yes. And now that means that he moves on to play Dan Musser in the next round. And I still like Nicholas Bird's chance of getting to the finals here. Yes, I, I, I think the, the bracket has broken very well for him. Well, Majors, Tilson, you're our final one. Take us home. Let's see who's going to move on to the semifinals here. Majors will take a look at seven. Patrick will do the same. And again, Majors will be on the play here. 4 p.m. Legacy Challenge players, your round three pairings are going up now. 4 p.m. Legacy Challenge players, your round three pairings are now being posted. Majors taking a long look at his hand, and if you've watched Death Shadow over the course of this weekend, and we've seen it quite a few times because it's a very good deck, and a lot of the top players are playing it here this weekend. you got to think a lot about the hands that you're going to keep with this deck because Mirsha's Bobble Street Wraith, you don't know what they're going to turn into. For Majors, he's going to start with a bobble. Take a look at the top card of his deck. Next up appears to be a wooded foothills. He's also got a traverse in hand. So he's going to start by sacrificing the wooded foothills. Two different types in the graveyard. Halfway home to Delirium already. You see how easy it is. We haven't talked a whole lot about it on this broadcast. And it, it almost goes without saying, but... Fatal Push has been a huge influence on Modern. Yeah. It's in a lot of these decks. I also think it's part of the reason that we're seeing a lot more Ban Eldrazi, because it's one of the few decks that can naturally cast fives and sixes. And the fact that you have, I mean, that with the match that I watched, um, my teammate Chad Castell play, where we played against an Eldrazi Tron deck, Fatal Push against Endbringers and Reality Smashers and Drowner Hopes was definitely an issue in the matchup. And I'm curious to see if there's opportunities for other five mana and beyond creatures to sort of get a little bit more burn now that Fatal Push is one of the marquee removal spells of the format. I do think that's some of the appeal. And I think what also is kind of interesting, you mentioned the five and six mana creatures. One thing that Band Eldrazi does a nice job of, let's take a look at Eldrazi Sky Spawner. Not really a card you want to Fatal Push, but the creature it leaves behind gets you to those five and six mana spells. Right. Which is a really big deal, getting those ahead of schedule. Here's a Tarmogoyf, as Patrick Tilson started things off with just a Shambling event. And I think we're a long ways away from, from Baneslayer Angel and its ilk coming back and being a part of Modern. Mm -hmm. But I just wonder if there's other fives and sixes floating around there that... Uh, maybe should see a bit more play than they used to. Yeah, there's a card worth mentioning as well as we wrap up this discussion. Tassiger. Sure. Yeah, much better now than it used to be. Yeah. I know the printing of Fatal Push was the what pushed Chad over the edge to play a Tassiger main deck in his Obzon deck. Makes sense. Let's see what Patrick Tilson wants to do now. He's got a Blooming Marsh. He'll play a Tarmogoyf of his own. Pass the turn back over to Michael Majors. Majors will draw a card. Now, we know that Majors does have some copies here of Fatal Push in hand. I kind of like an attack first if he's got Liliana the last hope in hand. Might just get it on the house. Well, it's worth a shot. Consider it on the house. On the house. Liliana the last hope is going to finish off that Tarmogoyf. And now Tilson very far behind. Mm -hmm. And now with Liliana the last hope on the battlefield trying to catch up via Lingering Souls is off the table. Yeah, some people might wonder why Liliana Last Hope is here and not Liliana of the Veil. Well, that's one reason. Yeah. That sort of thing can happen. But I think most importantly, this thing has a lot of functionality. It's really good against Obzon Company. And realistically, this deck really only has eight creatures. 
Death Shadow and Tarmogoyf. So be able, being able to reuse those creatures because they're so good in this deck is really nice. Also, the, ga the game isn't really about wearing out your opponent's hand, which I think most of the decks that are in the market for Liliana the Lasso want to do a little bit of that at least. And the fact that you have Street Wraith in the deck means the minus power on Liliana the Last Hope has a very different context. Here's a Liliana of the Veil. Goodbye, Tarmogoyf. I think both of these decks are playing with the preferred Liliana. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Going to tick down his Liliana will major. He's going to lose a Maelstrom Pulse and a Fatal Pusher to get back a Tarmogoyf. Also, fundamentally, I think Death Shadow has a much harder time beating creature removal than it has beating creatures, and Liliana the Last Hope is much better against creature removal than Liliana the Veil. It's a 4-5 Tarmogoyf now as we head back over to Patrick Tilson. So looking through the sideboard here, does Tilson have anything in the way of sweepers? He does have one damnation in the sideboard. Fair enough. Could play a role here. Tarmogoyf right now for Majors of 4-5. Death Shadow just a boring 1-1, one, one, but we know that can change very quickly. Don't have a great look at the contents in Tilson's hand. He does have five cards. He's tapping two mana for something. He'll go with Abrupt Decay on Liliana. It's a good place to start. I think that might grow the Tarmogoyf now. There's a Planeswalker in the graveyard. Artifact creature, instant land, sorcery, Planeswalker. So I think we're moving up. Make sure we can get an accurate reflection of the size of that Tarmogoyf here in just a moment. Might be a 6-7 now. Instant creature, land, sorcery, planeswalker. Artifact, too. Artifact. Bobble. Yep, yeah. the bobble. Just that easy. To note, Tilson did not use his Liliana last turn. Yep. Which uh, suggests a loaded hand on the other side. It suggests to me if I'm majors, I'm not attacking it. I just don't have a ton of interest in going after it. A lot of that depends on the quality of Major's hand. If he thinks that his hand's also loaded, and Tilson may turn around and activate it the next turn, if he draws something that's a blank, then maybe that changes the calculus. And if we're only talking about a point of damage here, it may be worth finishing off the Planeswalker. Both these attacks are going at Patrick Tilson. Now Major is representing that he can do quite a bit more than one damage with the Death Shadow here, with the Verdant Catacombs at the ready. Temple Garden. Still isn't going to take two to get that. Maybe another Abrupt Decay here. Fatal Push. Path. Maybe two paths. Yeah. Or two removal spells of some sort. Well, there's Fatal Push on Tarmogoyf. And now here's Path to Exile and Death Shadow. And again, more of an argument for Liliana the Last Hope. As, as I said before, this deck is much softer to creature removal than to creatures. Mm -hmm. So having a raised dead Planeswalker uh, serves a lot of needs for this deck. I want to take a look at Major's deck list, and I don't see what I was hoping to see. So last weekend, some combination of Sam Black, Matt Severa, Jerry Thompson, and Josh Hunter Layton, they all played this deck. And I don't know their exact deck lists because they were all a little bit different. But some of those players had an Ranger of Eos. Yep. And some did not. And this is part of the reason why. To play these deep games against the removal decks, mm -hmm. especially the ones that are pathing you up. It was easy to traverse for. As you mentioned, they path you to the lands to be able to get to it. And then you had a 3-2 two, and two more copies of Death Shadow. And it was difficult for these Abzan and Jun decks to be able to overcome all of that. Yeah. Tilson, three cards in hand right now, but plenty of spot removal. He's already cast this game. See if he can take care of another Tarmogoyf. Remember, he didn't plus Liliana last turn. Had he, he might be able to minus Liliana and take care of Tarmogoyf right now. Well, if he didn't plus it last turn, his hand's got to be stocked. Mm -hmm. That might have changed depending on what this draw step was if he missed, but... It's an Isle Spellbomb. Oof. What's this one? Okay, it's another copy of Liliana. 
This is brutal. It's getting tough. Down goes Tarmogoyf. The other thing that's difficult about this here for Michaels, he draws a card, looks like it's just a copy of Bloodstained Mire, is, okay, the plan was to go through the graveyard via Liliana and potentially Kologon's command. Kind of off the table now. Yeah, he's, just getting, he's just getting run out. Mm -hmm. And he has a lot of bad draws at this point. I mean, it, it, he needs to find another copy of Death Shadow or Tarmogoyf for a way to revive very quickly, and especially now with this Liliana having the ability to go up and represent more edicts down the line. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, Majors not having the ability to go deep in the sideboard uh, is really problematic right now. Yeah, no Ranger of Eos, no Lingering Soul. So basically what's happened here is they're scavenging Uzan Grimflayer, those last couple of cards. Makes a lot of sense why Tilson didn't plus that Liliana yeah. a couple yeah. turns ago. His hand was loaded. Yeah. That, that it does not surprise me now, having seen what happened here. There's a push. Majors will draw. The draw set was Big Game Hunter. So now, can Majors try to get the Rope-A-Dope? <laughs> where the Ooze gets activated, and then he discards the Big Game Hunter to Liliana's mad the Madness out through the Liliana. I mean, he's got to try. Here comes Scavenging Ooze. There's an activation. Ooze is going to get a counter. Still not the end of the world here for Tilson, should it break that way. Yeah. He's got to get the value from the Big Game Hunter, though. Oh, yeah. An interaction I was not expecting to see this weekend. No. But the big game hunter is nice here. It's at least some insulation from Liliana's edict. Yep. Should majors happen to draw Death Shadow or Tarmogoyf. All right. Scavenging is going to go up to four now. All right. Majors will draw. Bobble. I think he's got some interest in finding out what Patrick's going to draw. You know, I think I think about it a little bit here. There's the bobble. He's going to actually target himself. The problem with waiting on this big game hunter is if Tilson just moves to combat, he might Majors might, might just die. Kill him. Yeah. Might just kill him. Okay, so well, Majors has a push in his hand. Okay, so he's got that out, and I think Michael needs to get lucky anyway, and, and he's very smart. I think he might realize that you know what, a lot, a lot's got to go my way to get back into this because I'm so far behind at this stage that, hey, maybe he activates the Liana pre-combat. Maybe he makes some sort of error that I can take advantage of, and I got to get fortunate anyway. Yep. That might be the out in this spot. He can also just cast the fatal, the fatal push, the big game hunter, and be empty-handed. Also true. He can just fatal push also true. if he wants to. Yeah. He doesn't have to get super fancy if he doesn't want to. No doubt about that. But just trying to figure out, is there a way to squeeze a little bit of value out of this? He's going to pass the turn back. For those unfamiliar with Big Game Hunter, we take a look at the Human Rebel Assassin, I think. Yeah, he's got it. He's All, got right. It. Yeah. All right, BGH. <laughs> <laughs> yes. With a madness of a single black. Bet you didn't expect to see that this weekend. Now, what was the land that was played there? I uh, think it might be Stirring, Stirring Wildwood. Yeah, and uh, that's problematic here for, for Majors also yeah. at, at seven. Tilson also with access to Shambling Vent 2, mm -hmm. which can attack with this turn. Big game hunter causing all sorts of trouble. All right. Who's down? That's step one of many for Michael Majors. Going to fire up Shambling Vent. I think we're going to see a push. We will. Now, Majors did draw a copy of Abrupt Decay. So that's a thing. Something to pair with a threat if he wants to. If he draws a threat next turn, you know? He may just want to absorb some dead... If he draws dead cards, he may be feel happy to play through the Liliana. Well, what's kind of interesting about this is he might just want to go, okay, decay the Liliana, because if he draws Street Wraith, Street Wraith is like a real thing on this board. Right, yeah. You know? As weird as that is to say, and I think he's going to search for a basic forest here. Now, Tilson's going to blow 
the spell bomb to draw a card. But as weird as it is to say, he might just search for a basic force. Maybe a Lantern's Battlefield tapped if he's got any left. Ravnica like duels. I don't think he can. I think if he if he draws a Street Wraith, he still has to cycle. It's an option that he has, but I think he has to find Death Shadow here. Uh, he's he's behind the creature land on the table. Sure, sure. Nineteen to six on the life totals. I mean, I, it's it's. I think it's bad either way, but I I feel like Majors just needs to get to Death Shadow now. Matter of going hard casting it. Well, yeah. I, I guess it depends on the, the range on Tilson's graveyard here. But Goy's probably big enough also. Yeah. Maybe Major just wants to go hunt a little game. All right, Collector Brutality. Hunting some game. Pass the turn back. Because now if Major's draw Street Wraith, it is good against the Stirring Wild. Yeah, now you have 3-4 against 3-4. Yeah. It still may not be enough justification to hard cast. You still yep. might have to try to get lucky here falling to three, yep. but it is an option. For Tilson, he is going to very quickly sacrifice Verdant Catacombs. Looks like he's going to fall down to 17. Basic Swamp. The question now is, what is Tilson casting if he's fetching? Well, right now what he's doing is he's bashing for three, and he's playing another Spellbomb and passing the turn back. They draw a step here for Michael Majors. I think it may have been a Death Shadow. I think Inquisition was the draw there. Well, that one's not very good, so he'll just have to pass the turn back. Stir up a little Wildwood. Beat downs. Big Game Hunter going to block. Pass the turn back. Matrix will draw. How'd he do? Oh, yeah. The street race. Ooh. We've what been, up? We've been reduced to this. Yes, we have. It's not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but it's where we are. Now, Spellbomb is going to be cashed in to draw a card. Tilson will draw a card. 3 4 Swamp Walk typically cycled. Not today. Path that. This game is over. Patrick Tilson going to win this match over Michael Majors. Two games to one. Abzan going to take care of Death Shadow. And Tilson said he played this deck because he felt he had a good Death Shadow matchup, and he's just taking it down. I would agree. And uh, what I liked about Tilson in the game that we watched there, it wasn't one thing. It wasn't like he played one card to lock Majors out. It was every step of the way. He was able to maintain a presence on the battlefield, present a lot of removal, problematic planeswalkers. Uh, it was a, a f an effort from the full 60. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just one card.